Our next speaker is um, a colleague and friend, physiotherapist from Aspital, um, Andrea Mosler. Now, Andrea will also soon be, no, don't know exactly when, Dr. Andrea Mosler, because she's also studying towards a PhD. And her interest is the risk factors for hip and groin pain in professional football players. And she's studying this under the um, uh, supervision of Kay Crossley in, at the University of Queensland. Andre will speak on the screening for hip and groin pain in football players. Thank you. Thanks very much, Paul. I'm not sure uh, how soon that uh, will occur, but I hope it's sooner rather than later. Um, I'd really like to thank the organisers for inviting me to speak here today. It's a great honour to have this opportunity to discuss this project in front of such esteemed guests. So thank you very much uh, to the organisers. I'd also like to uh, acknowledge my academic, oh, sorry, my um, academic team here, my, super, my fantastic supervisors and academic uh, contributors to this project. There's many more people that need to be mentioned in, in, uh, amongst those names. But uh, standing in front of you today, one of the more important things I'd like to acknowledge is the support I've had from the Director of Rehabilitation, Riyad Maladi, to, to conduct this project. And also, one of the fantastic things about Aspatar is the collaboration between the various disciplines and the various uh, departments. And this project could not have occurred without the wonderful collaboration of people from many different departments. And I'd really like to acknowledge that teamwork and collaboration because without it, I couldn't have conducted this project. OK. I have no conflicts of interest to declare. By the end of this session, the three main uh, learning objectives that I will have is to discuss with you the screening tests that will be used to detect uh, current hip and groin pain here at Aspatar, the risk factors for future hip and groin pain, and the CAM deformity. So I'm going to teach you a little bit about CAM deformity and the footballers here in Qatar. So for the purpose of this presentation, I would like you all to put yourself in the position of a coach. A coach with the team is perhaps struggling a little bit on the league, in the league. You really want a big name player to score a lot of goals and help your team achieve better this season. Okay? So you want to recruit this player, but you know something about this player because you read the Daily Mirror and you know that he's recently had a significant groin injury. So you bring him here to Aspatar to find out, should I sign this player? Is he a risk? I want to know, can he play this weekend? What are his current symptoms? Has he recovered from this recent groin injury? But as a coach, I also want to build my team around this player for the next few years. So I'd like to know what his future injury risk. Now that he's had this significant groin injury, what is the risk that he's going to continue to have ongoing symptoms? So first of all, we'll talk about the tests that we would include in our screening to detect current symptoms of hip and groin pain. So we conducted a systematic review to look in the literature of case control, cross-sectional and cohort studies that detected which factors will differentiate between athletes with hip and groin pain and those without. And we looked across many categories, but in terms of the ones to include in our uh, groin screening, we found the strongest evidence for these tests. First of all, patient reported outcome measures. And there's many different patient reported outcome measures um, available. I've just put the HAGOS up here because this is the one that's specific for athletes with hip and groin pain. So these are good at differentiating athletes with and without groin pain. In addition, both pain and strength on the adductor squeeze test came out from our systematic review as a, as a test that's good at differentiating athletes. So a lower strength value and a higher rating of pain was good at detecting athletes with current pain. Also hip internal rotation with a stronger effect size in flexion in comparison to neutral and the bent knee fallout tests. So these tests had the strongest evidence that they were able to detect players with current hip and groin pain. That's not to say there aren't other tests, but this is where the strongest evidence occurred when we uh, accumulated all of the, the current research. 
Okay, coach is very happy. We've just tested our player and there's no indication that he has any current symptoms. So he's comfortable that he can play this player this weekend. However, as I mentioned to you, he wants to know what's his future risk. Okay, so now we'll move on to the sort of test that can predict future risk of hip and groin injury. Again, we look in the literature when we're designing our uh, screening program. We have two recent systematic reviews. One of these, the first one from Julian Ryan, is looking at field-based sports, and the second one from Jackie Whitaker, who's looked at all sports. And unfortunately for the coach, the factor that came out as the biggest uh, predictor of future injury is previous groin injury. So we already know that our star player is two and a half times more likely than his non-injured colleagues to have future hip and groin pain. Another factor that came out strongly was reduced hip adduction strength. And that's both uh, relative to what we consider normal or, or other players and also relative to the uh, abductors. So that where, that's where the adduction-abduction ratio that you may have heard of comes into play. Now there was conflicting evidence about range of motion. So the Julian Ryan study found uh, some evidence that reduced range of motion can predict future injury, while the Jackie Whitaker study found that level two evidence that reduced range of motion does not predict future injury. So we're still conflicting evidence here. Now our coach is very well educated and he uh, follows Twitter and he's been hearing about this funny bump on the bone in the femur. And he's also heard that there's lots of footballers having surgery for this bump and chopping it off. And he's wondering, maybe this player has a problem with a cam deformity. So cam deformity is very topical at the moment. And uh, we know a lot of things about the cam deformity and its relationship with groin pain. But there's also a lot of things that we don't know. So just to remind you, the cam deformity is this bump that forms on the femur, most likely as a result of high impact loading in athletes during adolescence. So what do we know? We know there's a high prevalence of CAM deformity in young athletes in comparison to controls, okay? There's also a high prevalence of CAM deformity in athletes that have current groin pain. So it appears to be associated with athletes that have groin pain. But we also know there's a lot of evidence there's a high prevalence of CAM deformity in asymptomatic hips. So currently there is a, there's a lot of conjecture about what exactly the relationship is between the CAM deformity and, and the development of hip and groin pain. And that was one of the key questions from the prospective study that we're conducting here at Aspatar. So in this study we have 575 QSL or Qatar Star League footballers that have attended screening in these two seasons. We've conducted a full screening battery and the screening batteries included pain provocation tests range of motion tests and strength tests, and also we ask them to fill out the Hagos questionnaire in their native language. We ask them to participate in the study and uh, receive an x-ray. Some disagree to do that, but, um, but fortunately we had 445 of our footballers who agreed to have these x-rays. And on all the footballers in the Qatar Stars League were conducting injury and illness surveillance and also noting their exposure in minutes for training and match play. So in our study, all of the footballers included are over 18 years of age. They're all professional footballers in the Qatar Stars League. We've collected a lot of information regarding their demographics, so height, weight, leg dominance, ethnicity, etc. We've measured their lever arm, and by doing this, we are able to normalize all of their strength tests to their body uh, weight and height. The pain provocation test that we've included is the Fader and Faber test, specific for hip joint uh, pain. We've also included the Copenhagen groin pain test and the adductor squeeze, and we've collected a, a score, a, an NRS score out of 10 for all of these pain provocation tests. In terms of range of motion tests, we've looked at internal and external rotation in flexion, and we've also looked at internal rotation in prone. We've looked at abduction range of motion in side lying, and the bent knee fallout test. So we've collected a lot of information regarding uh, range of motion. In terms of strength, we chose an eccentric uh, adduction and abduction test in side lying. And this is because there was a recent study looking at eccentric strength in athletes with hip and groin pain. 
and they found that eccentric test was better able to detect those with pain than isometric tests. In terms of the x-rays, we've done a standing AP in 15 degrees of internal rotation and a 45 degree done view which was shown to be the best at visualising the cam deformity on the femur. So we've just submitted this paper that towards the end of last year where we've taken out all of the athletes with, with, that presented with pain. So this is the asymptomatic cohort of footballers. And we've been able to accumulate all the results to provide some normal values that can be compared uh, across uh, professional footballers across the world, but particularly in our cohort. So what we've been able to obtain from this information, we now have a normal range of values for both strength and range of motion. So if we have this star player coming to screening and we test him with exactly the same tests that we have conducted on our whole cohort, we can, we can quite convincingly tell the coach he is within the normal range or outside the normal range. And if particularly his adduction strength is outside that normal range, we know from evidence in the literature that he is potentially increasing his uh, risk of future injury, which accumulates because he also has a past injury as well. So now we have some really valuable information that we can use to provide the coach about future risk, but also about the current state of the player in comparison to what we know is normal in the league. We can also use these values for any player that presents to the rehab department with a groin injury because we know what that player, uh, what his scores were before he got injured and then we therefore know what he needs to get back to in uh, following rehabilitation. We found there was no clinically significant effect of dominance, past, recent past injury history or ethnicity on these normal values. So this again, remember it's the players that came with, uh, without any groin symptoms. Another interesting finding was that adduction was about 20% stronger than abduction when measured with this testing. So a normal ratio of 1.2 was found for this football cohort. And what does this mean? It means that if we test a player and he sits outside this normal range, so remember we have these standard deviations, so perhaps our player sits in this part of the data then we can provide some really valuable information to the medical staff and also to the coach that perhaps he is lacking some adduction strength, his ratio is, uh, is in the area where it may be vulnerable to future injury and it might be advisable to, to uh, conduct some injury prevention program for that player. All right, now we're going to move on to cam deformity in the football players here in Qatar. And we also submitted this paper towards the end of last year where we've presented some of the results of our findings. So we've me we, we measure or we quantify the cam deformity using this alpha angle. So it's where the bump of the bone leaves this circle formed by the femoral head. And basically the bigger the bump, the larger the alpha angle will be. And what we found, we defined cam deformity as a 60 degree and above alpha angle. And we found in 60% of the hips here in the footballers in Qatar had a cam deformity. So it's a fairly high prevalence. And when you look at a large cam deformity, and again, we defined a large cam deformity as 78 degrees. And this is based on previous work by uh, Rinche Agricola as the, the uh, level of cam deformity that is most predictive of future OA. And we found that nearly a quarter of our hips actually have a large cam deformity. And to put that in the sense of, a, of the players, that means that 72% of the footballers that come to your care are likely to have a cam deformity in one or both of their hips. So it's very common. And we've just looked at the injury data for the last couple of years, and the interesting thing is we have this high prevalence of cam deformity, but a very low prevalence of hip-related groin pain in this cohort in Qatar. So. We also found some interesting things about ethnic differences in uh, prevalence of the cam deformity. So you can see here across most of the ethnicities it was a, a fairly stable prevalence, but one group had a lower prevalence and that's the, the group from South Korea. We had a small cohort, but even though it was small, we actually found a statistically significant difference in the prevalence rates of cam deformity in, in this ethnic group. And when we looked at the uh, large cam deformity, it was actually absent in this uh, East Asian ethnicity. And we found that the Caucasians 
seem to have a higher prevalence than the, uh, the black footballers in our cohort. And there just seems to be a little bit of a higher prevalence amongst the Caucasians compared to the other ethnicities. And these ethnic differences correspond with the geographical, known geographical differences in OA rate. So maybe there's something different about, uh, about some hits in, in these footballers because it's most likely that they've experienced similar loading during adolescence because they're all professional footballers. So these are some interesting data that requires further investigation. Okay, so we've x-rayed our star player and we found a cam deformity in his hip. What do we tell the coach? I'd like to ask the audience now with this information that I provided to you, if this player has a cam deformity, who thinks we need to tell the coach he's at increased risk of developing hip and groin pain? Who says yes? Put up your right hand. Who says no, he's not at increased risk of developing hip and groin pain? Who says we don't know? Who's too, too, too uh, exhausted to put their arms up? <laughs> okay, so yeah, that's the question, isn't it? So if we, we x-ray his hip, we find a cam deformity, what does that tell us? I think we don't know yet, but hopefully we will know very soon. So to summarise what we found from groin screening, I've talked to you about some tests to, to detect current pain. So I highly recommend the Hagos questionnaire or some form of patient reported outcome measure. The adductor squeeze test, hip internal rotation inflection, and the bent knee to fallout test. So these are all good tests to include in a, in a groin screen where you're looking to detect current symptoms. In terms of detecting risk factors, we now have normal values for our Qatar st Stars League population that we can compare any player that comes to us for screening or even for rehabilitation following injury. And very soon we'll be able to look at the validity of these tests. We're, we're busy working on the databases to analyse the data and be able to tell you how good some of these tests are at predicting future injury. In terms of the CAM deformity, it seems to be very common in the footballers here in Qatar. There seems to be an, some ethnic differences in the prevalence of CAM deformity. And again, very soon we'll tell you what this all means and the relationship between the presence of the CAM deformity and groin symptoms and whether the CAM deformity is an important contributor to the risk of developing hip and groin pain. Thanks for listening. <laughs>